finally made it. It's the relaunch of the JAB show, Your Life by Design. What a joy and pleasure to be with you again. We finally made it. And this, this emotions well in, in me tonight. Um, everybody, Sierra Leoneans, wherever you are, you're inside Saloni, you're out of the country, thank you for praying with for us. Thank you for supporting us in your prayers because a so, few weeks from now, it will be 35 years to the day when this crazy journey, and you call a mad journey starts with me, um, we blow up to what we're celebrating today, what has touched the lives of thousands of thousands of Sierra Leoneans, that today we would be witnessing the relaunch of the JAB show, Your Life by Design. What a pleasure, what a joy. I'm so grateful to God for the privilege and opportunity of life, of the gift that has given me to impact this nation, Sierra Leone and Sierra Leoneans, and whoever this thing leaked to that have been blessed. I, I know I have reached out to people outside Sierra Leone, uh, particularly in, uh, um, you know, uh, in, in Nigeria, uh, whether it was Abuja, whether it was Guagalada, whether it was you know, four or five states then that are visited in Nigeria to speak to young people touch their lives there, I am super grateful. All the people, everybody, my mommy, my daddy, my uncle, my auntie, everybody that had laid their hands on this, this poor, weak, young man. There was not supposed to be anything, <laughs> but still became something anyway, and, and became a phenomenon to touch the lives of hundreds of thousands of Sierra Leoneans. I am super grateful for this privilege and this opportunity to be here again today. Now, lots of um, questions have been asked over the years, a lot of the time. There's, if I walk the streets of Freetown, there's no time I would walk and not meet somebody that see me for the first time and, and would be super thrilled that they could see me face to face in person because 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I had said something that literally just changed and transformed their lives. So the question they ask, why life by design? Why would they see the show again? Well, <laughs> your prayers have been answered. That's why we're here again. Life by design is back with a difference. But let's start from the top. What is life by design? Somebody's watching this for the first time. Then. What is life by design? Life by design is the story of my life. <laughs> of somebody, like I said just now, that was not supposed to be at all, at all, at all. I was not supposed to be. You know, but I am, and, and, and but, but so what does that mean when I say I was not supposed to be? Now, I could show you several photos of myself, <laughs> of what I looked like. Um, there was this, this, there's this, this movie, uh, we didn't do Aki and Popo, where um, Mr. Ibu take Aki, um, he take, we don't have Popo, we don't have Popo, we take, he go giam, he go for go giam as gift, they wrap him as gift for go give away. And what I used to say that, even if they mean give me to you as gift, you're not going to take me at all because there was nothing in me to choose. There's nothing in me that represented a gift. There's nothing in me, any iota, that would indicate that this man would do what has happened today in my life. So I would have started like you. And obviously, one of the things with this, everybody, now the fact that you could see me today, but, but the ability for you just go back and realize that this man wakes him up so we don't touch nations. He'd been telling like me. It been then at the position when me did so. Started off, like I said, some, some, for some of you, um, I was even worse off than the position where you did now. I believed, and that put me on the journey. Now, born to elite experience. That's what I will say. You've seen me, Mami, um, Kony Bangua, and me, Daddy, Abu, and, you know, of blessed memories. Me, Daddy passed away at 92, and me, Mommy passed on at um, 70, 75, 76 years of age. But... <laughs> How I bless God for you. How I bless God for you. How I bless God for you. You were nothing. <laughs> but you became the instrument that God would use to bring these things to pass. I was like you. The life and the story, story is my story. It's my story. It's your story. It's the story of the majority of Sierra Leoneans. And heck, it's the African story, I've always said, you know, from nothing we can be something. That's the life by design um, story. Now, Bonto Elite experience, I struggled, um, you know, all my life. And, you know, 
I, I have to take me all levels. My first all levels now, but I can me. I still chase that result day. And I will not give up until I get that first result day. Because he was two sevens, two eights, and three nines. That's what I had. Seven subjects, failed all seven subjects. I tried again the following year at the um, the Muslim Congress, the Iranian Muslim Congress Secondary School, and that's the that's the, the, the results you see here today um, on your screen, and the results, <laughs> English language 6, economics 6, maths 9, comma 6, accounts 8, uh, oral English 7, and, and this was the second one, and, and it was better off a little than the first one, but it still wasn't enough for me to do anything with that. The struggle continued. Now, during that period, I had to drop out of school. I dropped out of school. The job where I get now, now the CIM Police Marketing Board, they call them SLPMB. Um, you know, the empty sacks of Pam Camel, what do you mean they do? They offload Banga Bang them for Motukade where they come up line. That was my first job I got. Now, when it will be in tap with my parents there, so SLPMB, um, you know, it, it, it grows out. Everybody know and know PMB, but it's everybody that are ending on SLPMB. That's why we did. I did that job for a couple of while until my daddy gave me a job, helped me for me to get a job in some strange ways that I, I can't even begin to tell that story there. Now the Sierra Post Office, uh, what we call Sal Post. That's what it was. And I worked there as a, as a clerk of the Auditor General's uh, Department. It was called Auditor, Auditor General's Department then, 1987. That's when I started working here. And, um, you know, <laughs> It, it was still a sad story. It was better off than where I was, 300 leons a month. Not only new leons, obviously, in 1987, and different leons that they talk about too. And even though now in 1987, 300 leons, still not of money, all that they did do was to pay my way 50 leons every week for going and come back from Wellington. That's what I used. So, so four weeks, 200 leons, then the 100 leons, that's what I uh, maybe I'll put your money, give me, give me mama 50 leons. And, and the balance, nine and me own, uh, lunch money and me and That's what I started off with. It's a life by design. That's what we want to be able to say. Now, one of the, one of the things and with, with characteristics of this, now the fact that during this period, next door to the Sierra Leone Postal Services, who we call South Post, now the Post Office, now Sierra Leone Commercial Bank. One me paddy the way that we all been in a class. <laughs> it opened a Sierra Leone Commercial Bank. That's any Sierra Leone Commercial Bank then get uniforms. The man in the way uniform. Now, khaki to assist them in the way with white shirts. One pan the man, the boy, the movie that we all been there in a class, we don't begin walking as I don't come as a man. We see the boy dress, white long sleeve, he gets inside, he's so sleek. If you see me no more wear a dress, you don't know say something wrong with me. Something was wrong with me. If any time I get a chance to make this boy not see me, I hide, make him not see me at all. Difficult moments of my life. But then, as I, as I got tired of warning and seeing all the frustrations in life, something happened in my life when I did the life by design story begin in terms of the transformation. Because almost two weeks, it's over two weeks before me back the me 22nd back day, I've been on 21 years of age, me back then on 7th April. And so 21st of March 1989, something happened. This pastor, yeah, me and England keep complaining since 1986. If they go now with us, if they go keep service, now this us, 81 Philip Street, now Wellington. Hope you see this us now the background. Now, it don't they come there all the time for can keep service with me, home self fellowship. So I'm telling me, I've been so tired for this pastor that it, <laughs> even though I end up for me pastor today, if I see I'm at the run, I the eye to make you not see me, pass in the backyard because I didn't want to sit in, in, in service there. One evening, I couldn't run away. I did not have to run away because that was my moment of destiny. I sat 81 Philip Street in Wellington. I watched him as he preached as usual. But that night was different. As he preached and he gave the call for the one they want to give their life to Christ, something welled up inside me. Something jumped up inside me as if it was my moment of destiny. And, you know, as he, gave, as he did this, as he gave this call, I knelt down before this pastor and I wept. I wept, I wept, I wept before him. And I knew something had happened to me. I prayed the prayer away, asked me for make a pray. And then, you know, uh, you know, and, and, you know, people they say them pray so today, and you know nothing happened to them because they go away and nothing happens to them. No, it changed my life. That night changed my life. It changed it forever. Because I woke up the next day and I just realized I had to now align 
my lifestyle by the, the faith where I don't declare. I don't make a profession. Jesus, I give my life to you. This is who I am, and I surrender my life to you as my Lord and Savior. And so what it means is that my life had to now align with this confession that I had made. And that day the trouble begin. Call and trouble. When I did the transformation begin, because what it means, it's how somebody go keep coming and don't this for you, Bafa. Don't elegance. Can we stay now? It means it had to now be a no go area. And imagine anything in the you know, school boy. What is school boy and Koyoba get in common? They're nothing. What is school boy and girlfriend, girlfriend business they get in common? You know, not party there. No, not to party. And so, what I had to now deliberately do is to be able, after having made a spiritual decision, is to be able to now make sure say, I can realign, realign my life. Next big decision, I believe that I can go back to school. Who said you go to school? Your parents say you for pay? No. By that time, they, they, I don't know now, say, if I help people and they help me. So, it, it doesn't have to be my own parents that they help me. No. Me sabi within a me head and me body, where I go put together me bone, sweat, where I go sweat for help other people. Them. When time come, then self they able for help me. Now, that day I used for begin push me life go before. So, once this pastor prayed for me, I gave my life to Christ, then this big thing started. I went back to school. Um, Santiki Koma, blessed memory, not of blessed memory. Santiki Koma, don't call him blessed memory. God bless his soul. God bless his life. It's almost still. What you've been doing this thing, said you did one, um, you know, you did a recorded show, and, and, and you go, but, but God bless and take Koma. He's now based in the United States of America, and his wife, um, Yebu, Yebu Koma, they took me in, and those people blessed me. These people helped me. When it was time for me to go back to school, they paid my fees, 1,000 euros. Then, that ten day, government independent secondary school, that is why I went for go take my own levels. I had that result, it was even better. And so once I put them together, it was time for me to move forward. I began making new choices in this show. And there's something I learned where, where, where this time is very important. I learned the power of choices during this process. And the power of choices says we are not just the product of our circumstances or our environment, but we are more, even much more importantly the product of our choices. This is all I learned. And as I took steps one after the other, I saw the changes in my life. When I, when, when I decide for begin for story, I saw the effects from my results. When I decide for begin discipline in my life, who I was going to be friends with, I saw the difference. And once I saw the difference, I couldn't stop. As I saw the change in my life, I said, I will begin for share this message to other people. <laughs> I will share this message to other people. My friends, them, I had to now begin with, first of all, at church. I just begin to share. The changes will not take place in my life. As a result of the new decisions, what I begin to what I begin for take. It changed me, it changed me, it transformed me. And I couldn't stop. So from 1989, once 1980, I was all over the place. I passed my O-level exams. I sat again and passed motivational talks in churches. Then 1999, I moved to Radio BBN FM 93, where a talk show. I was, you know, first of all, it started by a Faith Partners Club, where it was really challenging Christians. Then I moved beyond the Christian body to now winning ways with a general motivational, um, 1980, 1999 to 2000 and second 2010. It went right to. Right after that period, 2004, it became a motivational show. 2004, we call it Winning Ways. Then 2011, something happened. We went to television for the first time, and we called this Life by Design. 2011. Now, so, so we go back from 19, to 1989, come back to 2024. In two months, 21st March, to this year, in two months, we would be... 35 years exactly to the day when this crazy stuff started in 1989. That's a powerful day in my life, 21st March, 1989. So Life by Design was born. Now, what happened? Life by Design, 900 episodes later. If you go now, we, now we YouTube, now we YouTube channel. There are videos and videos, tons of videos, you know, face-to-face, Pitches that we did in churches and various places in Sierra Leone, outside Sierra Leone. I tell you just now about you know stuff them that I've done in Nigeria and in various Winners Chapel churches out there. And then and reaching what we, we assess is over three million Sierra Leoneans and counting. Between over three million Sierra Leoneans and counting, the journey continued, and um, you know, and lots and lots of stories. What could really, I say? You know, you already you would have watched television. I would have seen and, and all over would have seen the vintage interview that I did with um, the late Solomon Bewa, um, where 
na, na be vice president na this country and presidential candidate for the Sierra Leone People's Party during the 2018 elections. And then, um, you know, this interview, every now and again, <laughs> you know, everybody, they use them for uh, whenever it happens, uh, every once in a while, for suit their message. But this was a pivotal moment in the history of our country. This interview may have shifted a lot of stuff in this country that changed the dynamics of where things would have gone if, if, if this was not being played. Um, you know, go to back, call me statesman and mediator, because that was the role I was playing. Now, I, I, I brought together SLPP, um, and, and APC politicians in a TV show. And I said, you know, I talked about the danger where they happen when we do not have a life outside politics. Politics becomes a matter of life and death. Because politicians will get life outside politics. Politics does not become life and, or death. Because once the politics done, then they go back to their previous life. And I brought two politicians there. Because I'm a nation-shaping person. You see, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an influencer, and I'm a change maker. That's why I brought them together. And I hosted Alpha Wuri then. It was before this 2018 election. I hosted, hosted Dr. Alpha Wuri, who had had 10 years of, of being a minister in SLPP government. I brought the late Bish Bishekanu, Hassan Bishekanu, who had been minister of mines and, and you know, during the APC regime for more than 10 years. They had a life outside politics. And what thing happened when politics left them, they went back to their business and not being fit for nothing. And that's the same thing that Sir so, so said. He said, you know, um, you know <laughs> the safety and peace of Sierra Leone was more important than me being president. And, and so that was the message. So change maker, change maker, change maker. As a statement and a politician, the stories are many. Now, I can tell you about a standoff will take place in my office now. Um, <laughs> Now, like in line, it was just before this election that we brought, um, you know, His Excellency uh, Mada Bio, Mada Bio, into power. Now, <laughs> there was this SLPP youth there when the telephone came up with office there at like SCTV. Um, I was, you know, managing director for that company there. And then, the, obviously, if they can't, you know, in the APC office, they big plumber before for them. They don't broke one big glass that the office fall all the panic stone, stone with them in Japan. And so I had to jump down from my office. I put helmets and I me aid, and I, 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 I somebody been in there with the same towel there. I take one towel, I begin with the white towel, with the white towel. I went to the policeman, them, counsel the policeman, them. I go to the SLPP youths, them, we've been in a U building, uh, U building gate, and I got to them. There was this guy, Emerson. Emerson became. Um, afterwards became uh, a commissioner, a deputy commissioner now the National Youth Commission. When I went to Emerson, I said, Emerson, you know, and this Emerson said, yeah, now Abbas, now Abbas, now Abbas, come, come, come. So I got Emerson together and I took him to the police and said, police, <laughs> I said, police, papa, police, eh? This is now politics. You, they for the people of Sierra Leone, you they for everybody, you not know, just say for government. Police, you they for everybody. Police, what you say? You live for everybody. And so I said, on our own meeting with SFPP then, on our guide them, provide the security where they need for go inside. Because that's it, I mean, I mean, you know, the SFPP and I mean, the final rally, what they need for do before that election day, that 20, the 20, 2018 election. Was it the 2018 election? It was, you know, it wasn't the 2018 election. It was not actually the 2018 election. Now, the election will bring Madabio into power. That was the election that brought Madabio into power. And so, once we, once we got them, I, I got them talking, they organized the match and they go. And who would know that a few weeks afterwards, Madabio would become president of the Republic of Sierra Leone? Who would know from this young man that was nothing, that was not supposed to be, but still moved on after this crazy thing we happened in 1989 and became um, a political mediator in the, in the nation? I've lectured in all the major universities in the country. I have been an entrepreneur, super entrepreneur. You all know the story. My story with ACTV savings and loans from wherever it was when we took it there. You know my story with AfriCell, working with AfriCell from zero, from nothing. You know, we started AfriCell together. This is my 19th year working with AfriCell. We built that company together. This guy that wasn't supposed to be at all, at all, was involved in all of this. Then ACTV savings and loans, built, you know, license and stuff, Life by Design Limited, that grew to be a group. We incubated IDT Labs, and then accelerated Incimedia, then acquired Growth Salon, built in 2021. These businesses were valued 
at over two million US dollars from nothing from this guy that wasn't supposed to be. It's the life by design. Obviously, it's followed by international awards. In 2017, we won the award, the National Achievement Award, award as the Indigenous Business of the Year. 2014, we won the um, an award by the as, as an international alumni of the year by the United States, US States Department for the public education campaign that we, you know, I was part of during the Ebola um, um, ep epidemic. Can I pause a moment? Now one thing for let me tell me story of impact. Now one thing if you came back from the mort, the people in the mort way wouldn't, wouldn't be affected. <laughs> it's taking lunch. In case you're just joining us, it's taking lunch. It's life by design. It's your life by design. It's the JAB show, the lunch. Your life by design. That's what we're celebrating today. And um, so, it's taking lunch. Let's tell the story from the eyes of Saltin, one of the beneficiaries of this crazy journey. Now, so this is what Saltin wrote himself. I'll read Saltin's word himself. Saltin said, is this, he said, my turning point with life by design. Saltin Masali. This he did it. He said, I faced uncertainty after leaving university in the US due to family reasons. Returning to Sierra Leone without a clear path. Returning to Sierra Leone without a clear path. I had no degree, job, and only a boarding project, careers of SL. The narrator aimed to provide um, digital job alternatives for Sierra Leonean youth. We need to be able to check that one. But he said, despite the noble, this noble mission, scaling careers.sl proved challenging without financial support and, suitable, and a suitable platform. The turning point occurred, turning point, when my mother, a viewer of Joe Abbas's Life by Design, reached, suggested that I reached out to Joe Abbas. That was in 2013. Joe's reputation for nurturing young innovators led to a prompt an encouraging response for me. So obviously, something came back to me. I respond very quickly. Same day, maybe within two hours, marking the beginning of a transformative collaboration. Within a week after meeting Joe Abbas, careers of SL being a workspace, initial funding, and a dedicated team accelerating its growth and its impact. At 21, with no significant achievements, Joe's belief in the in, in Saltin's potential, in my potential, led to securing 50,000 US dollars funding with a personal contribution. I contributed, actually, actually contributed 17,000 US dollars out of the 50,000 dollars when we take lunch. Paul Skiller, <laughs> my boss and mentor, said, Joe, if you believe in Saltin, <laughs> we're not going to put your money no more. You said put your money there. So $17,000 of my own personal money also came into, into supporting careers.sl and building, building IDT Labs. Life by Design provided a platform amplifying careers.sl's mission, transcending the project from a, live, from a living room idea. To Sierra Leone's premier job marketplace, you know, careers are the biggest job marketplace in Sierra Leone, and benefiting over 100,000 young people. Now, who's next? <laughs> in their own words, this is Cherry Norman, sorry. Now, <clears throat> I could not have even remembered Cherry Norman, sorry, again, because the encounter, he said, I first learned about life by design with Jarvis Wagwadi in my first year at um, IPAM, 2013, 2012-13, entrepreneurship session at British Council. We organized that thing, and we paid for it. For we self self as, as a business. I was curious to learn more, and by that time, it was much more of an educational learning instrument towards my academic priorities. Therefore, I was fortunate to be among those, in who, those invited, and from that day, it changed my knowledge about work outside the university. The most memorable message I learned that triggered my transformation journey was about the importance of starting your own next big thing that will employ thousands of youths in Sierra Leone. After my graduation from my PAM with BSc's Honours um, Applied Accounting, I was given multiple opportunities to work with different firms, but I believed in my passion and dedication to become a successful entrepreneur. Therefore, I started an electronic repair shop as my first project at Golden Street and used my academic knowledge on, the fi on finance to bring informal knowledge of repairs with the formal knowledge of accountancy that have revolutionized the repair market in Freetown. Now, we are expanding to another location to offer multiple products and services. And now, I would love to share my life by design story to wider audiences, especially students, and let them know that it is possible for them too. <laughs> Nothing as great as hearing the stories 
from those that have been affected. I, I, I tell God, thank you so much, and, and for you always supporting me, and, and, and really say thanks to the family. And you know, uh, some of us have seen them, some of us haven't. Um, this is my wife, Ellen. This is Josetta, the eldest. This is Wisdom, the second, and this is Adassa, um, the last one, and Mamuda. Uh, modestic is um, it's, it's a grand it's a grandchild um, to the family. Welcome to the relaunch. Welcome to the relaunch. Now, so what we're doing today is relaunching life by design. Why did we have to relaunch? What is going to be different after this relaunch? What is going to be different going forward? Well, the mission would be the same. With mission of life by design, now for empower young people for take responsibility for creating the future what they want for experience. Your future dinner you earn. You not get no other savior. Now you know you save you. And me a pastor. If me pastor tell you save you, now you save you because now so God make me. In, in Genesis chapter one, um, it says twenty six. It says God make man and he give dominion. It says let them have dominion over things of the air, over things on the land, and things below the sea. Nobody should tell you. That he hasn't given us responsibility. Everything you see around here is, a, you know, for the Bible narrative, when God created the world in seven days, he rested. God has not created anything after the seven. Once he made man, the responsibility for creating what does not exist. Now, man get that responsibility. And make we call a life by design. <laughs> it's, a, it's a man by design. And I could, I could read 1,000 scriptures for you for just proof, say, this is what you life in that you are. I, I believe it to the core of my being. And not to because me in a lock. No, obviously the stories that you hear people will not tell thousands and thousands and thousands of Sierra Leoneans. The other time now London, I walked to um, Clapham High Street, now London. And somebody just walked up to me and said, he said, guy, uh, 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 he said, Joe, I said, I don't have any guy for well. He took me to lunch, one Nando's thing in Clapham High Street. He took me for lunch, buy chicken for me, serve me, and all why he did this is because he's been watching the show and he's been so impacted by the show. From, from nowhere, from airports, traveling to Brussels, you would meet people there who would, <laughs> we would pull, oh my God, this story, the other 10 alumni, one girl, in a fishing in a cell, he don't give up now in life, he don't believe he's going to this fish business that he go there. The 10 one meter, he don't go back in a school, he don't go taking all levels, and he was preparing to go to university. My God, my God, my God. Talk to this pastor, pastor, it's not pastor, the pastor in a Baptist church now with my first. <laughs> he stole his story, dropped out from grammar school. My story has touched lives. We have to keep it going. That's why when people ask, who's them like by design, they come out, what's happened to them, what's happened to them? Because, you know, beyond, life now moves beyond television. So if not television, want to keep this no more. Half of the people that we want for Siam, no way for Siam, because the world is now mobile. And so, what's going to happen, what's going to change? The, the, the mission are the same. For empower young people for take responsibility, for create the future with them wish for experience. Help them for unleash their lives, their careers, and their interpre interpre entrepreneurial potentials. What's in our vision? We vision now for CSEA alone, where every youth will realize that the power to shape their future rests in their hands. Kabaya! Uh, so what is going to be different? Well, with a transition from a TV-focused stuff where we go to multi-channel, so we use WhatsApp, we will use YouTube, we will use Facebook, like how it comes to you, to you so today, we will use Instagram and TikTok, and um, then we will still, we still in a radio and TV. We would be spicing that so that nobody would be left behind. Nobody would be left behind and in this process, and as you notice, you know, not career at the top. Now, because majority of Sierra Leoneans so we want to make this message go all about in the country. This one we don't change people in life in Freetown for go all about in Kailau, in Cambia, in Kenema, in Bo, in Pujeo, wherever, in Mongere, in all the villages there. Once WhatsApp they reach there, we want to be able to make sure this message reach there all over, all over with Sierra Leone and Sende. We think will be different, we want to prepare show notes. That means say, each show where they go out, we be able for right waiting we don't talk about and show you how you follow for applying. Because this is not just entertainment, it's transformation. It's about changing your lives. So we want for information so we give you the tools. So now, what's now we call to action? Therefore, <laughs> as we have launched the show today, what do you need to do? Number one, 
You get for subscribe to the Joe Abbas Life by Design WhatsApp channel. We will get for put this up. If you go on our Facebook page, you will see all the details in, um, for the channel. And then, so once you don't subscribe to the channel, look out for new episodes of the show every Tuesday. We will drop in a new episode. Download the episode. Watch, listen, and share those episodes. Number three, take advantage of the show notes then. We will get for share with you. Number four, share your own life by design story. You get for share your own life by design story. What a beautiful, what a beautiful moment. So, so ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my family, on behalf of everybody that's been involved in this process, on behalf of responsors that have stopped by us, have we sell a call to business, a True Stone Paul Skiller, and the Life by Design Group, IC Bank, and AYV Media Empire, and even SLBC, Trade, 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 and everybody in SLBC that was, being, that was part of making this dream real, Afri Radio. All of you are looking for Corona All, but we are back. We are back. Life by Design is back. Multiple channels all over the place. We will be a vanguard for change in Sierra Leone. We are building a movement. We are collecting young people together. Your future and your destiny, not in a nobody in hand, it in a you hand. And we go wake, we we'll cook with you every day for make sure say you self can create your own life by design. <laughs> God bless you. It's been a wonderful evening. Share this message. Download this video. Share them all over the place. Share them to people. Make them watch and let them look out for life by design. This is a huge vehicle of change that is country. Till we meet inside the first episode inside this new era, I'm Joe Abbas Mangro for the entire production team. <laughs> entire production team, the JLB Life by Design Group, Inky team. Stay blessed.